So what are we talking about? How criminal gangs and kleptocracies overseas take the ill gotten gain and put it in safe places where the rule of law actually protects them. I think it's ironic that they pick rule of law nations to store their money after they rob their own people blind. The good news for us is that we're rule of law nation, rule of law nation. The bad news is we're becoming second only to Switzerland and the place people pick to put their money. You know, being second in a lot of things is good. Not here. Uh, so absorb what I said. According to the Tax Justice Network, a UK NGO, and from what I can tell, a legit organization, uh, we're second behind Switzerland in terms of safe havens for money laundering because of the reasons that Senator Whitehouse and Feinstein described. It's hard to beat the Cayman Islands, but we have. For example, the Maduro regime in Venezuela stole 1.2 million from the Venezuelan economy. These pro proceeds wound up in real estate, horses in Florida, luxury apartments in Manhattan, all through anonymous companies. The former prime minister of Malaysia is in the center of one of the largest scandals in the world regarding kleptocracy. He used money to purchase prime real estate in Manhattan, Beverly Hills, Los Angeles, and provide lavish gifts to people throughout the country. Russia used shell companies to funnel money and information to the Internet Research Agency, which fed the trolls involved in the 2016 election. Illegal financial flows drain about one trillion from the developing world, the people who can afford it the least. The Sinola cartel is the richest drug cartel in Mexico and relies heavily on the U.S. financial system to launder its dirty money. So here's the deal. We're going to find a way to get not be second. <laughs> We're going to find a way to make it harder to park stolen money in America without disrupting the way we do business. But I'm very open-minded how to craft the legislation. I'm closed-minded in terms of ignoring the problem. So with that, our panel will rise. You solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, except for God. So we have four witnesses. Uh, Mr. Fuller is uh, Gene Kilpatrick Fellow of Foreign and Defense Policy Studies, uh, American Enterprise Institute. Mr. How you say your name, sir? Subin is Distinguished Practitioner in Resident John Hopkins School of Advanced International Studies of Council Sullivan and Cromwell in New York City Law Firm. Uh, Mr. Tom Firestone is a partner, co-chair, North American Government Enforcement Practice, Baker McKenzie, law firm here in Washington. Ms. Sheila Krumholtz, is that right? She's been before the community before, and we appreciate you coming back. Executive Director, Center for Responsive Politics. We have a uh, humanitarian budget markup at 1030. I'm going to start and would ask my colleagues to allow me to go and participate in the hearing. Senator Feinstein, excuse me, Senator Whitehouse, I imagine you'll be here the whole time. So I'll turn it over to somebody, but uh, go ahead, Mr. Fuller. Thank you, Chairman Graham, Ranking Member Feinstein, distinguished members of the committee. Thank you for asking me here to talk about kleptocracy and mitigating the national security threats of it. So kleptocratic corruption left unchecked is corrosive to the legitimacy of the rule of law and democracy anywhere. The illicit international laundering of stolen sovereign wealth spreads corruption. It expands and strengthens the networks of transnational criminal organizations, terrorist groups, and adversarial states that threaten American national security. The most commonly used tool in kleptocratic corruption is the anonymous shell company. And anonymous shell companies introduce unnecessary risks to our markets and to our national security they make sanctions more difficult to enforce effectively, and they can potentially destabilize international financial markets and institutions. The best first step we can take is to end, to end the anonymous shell company is by creating a non-public national beneficial ownership registry, registry accessible only to law enforcement agencies with proper congressional oversight 
and professionals who can be held accountable for any misuse or mishandling of the information in the registry. In dealing with problems that kleptocracies and anonymous shell companies create, economic transparency, in my view, is a nonviolent asymmetrical weapon that can be used and is in lockstep with the character and morality of our nation. Economic transparency is also a shared characteristic of other rule of law democracies and aspiring rule of law democracies around the world, as I've indicated in my written testimony. And on this particular issue of beneficial ownership transparency, I believe that now is the most opportune time for the US Congress to lead the way and set a global standard for the world on this issue of beneficial ownership transparency. However, I want to be clear that I'm not speaking of transparency simply for its own sake. We must come to understand that the transparent nature of our politics and our economy is a strategic advantage in the post-Cold War era, as are our privacy rights. And to have a winning strategy requires understanding the problem clearly and realistically. So what that means is that all authoritarian regimes around the world are to some degree a form of kleptocracy. The monopolization of political power is the hallmark of authoritarian governance anywhere in the world. And where this monopoly on political power exists, it leads to theft and corruption. However, this does not mean that all authoritarian regimes are our enemies even though all of our enemies are authoritarian regimes. In the highly interconnected and rapidly changing global economy, we must come to recognize that deeper economic integration with authoritarian kleptocracies puts us at risk in any number of different ways. Corruption, kleptocratic corruption is the disease. Kleptocracy, authoritarian kleptocracy is patient zero. Therefore, we must make difficult choices. One is to inoculate ourselves by taking small, incremental steps towards greater economic transparency and in the process leading the free world on issues of fairness, privacy rights, and the rule of law. The anonymous shell company is the most commonly used le legal vehicle for channeling the proceeds of corruption and criminality all around the world and it's easier to create one in the United States than it is for me to go get a public library card. Ending anonym anonymity in business and corporation while preserving the privacy rights of individuals and businesses is consistent with the rule of law and all democratic norms. Beneficial ownership transparency is a potent, nonviolent, asymmetrical tool of national security in the coming fight against kleptocracy. Thank you, and I, I welcome your questions. Thank you, Chairman Graham, Ranking Member Feinstein, 